Walking in on Loretta and Cleveland having sex? Uh, Peter, that wasn't, uh... You know, for a large, heavyset black guy, Cleveland's got a cute little white ass. Number 20. Brian joining the Griffin family. Family Guy isn't exactly known for its continuity. And that even goes for the main characters. There are at least two different canonized versions of how Brian joined the Griffin family. The first was established in the very beginning of the series, where it was explained that a grown-up Brian had been begging on the side of the road when Peter took him in. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, you, you hungry? Because, uh, you know, my, my, my wife makes us beefaroni casserole out of this world. However, in the episode The Man with Two Bryans, Brian tries to win his family back over by showing them home movies of him as a puppy. If Peter really found him as an adult dog, how would those videos even exist? Add in the fact that Brian discovered he had a whole other family before the Griffins in Who's Brian Now, and things become even more complicated. We thought we'd never see you again. We made a grave for you and everything. Want to see it? Want to see your own grave? Uh, uh no thanks. Good, because we had to move it to put in the trampoline anyway. Number 19. Peter's hair changing from white to brown. In hefty shades of gray, Peter's hair suddenly goes white after a ghost hunting mishap, and it's established that it's permanent. Well, I'm a fat dad with white hair now. Time to become an issue at Hooters after 9 p.m. Due to his white hair, Peter is hired to be a fake news reporter at Quahog 5. At the end of the episode, Donald Trump asks Peter to work for his cabinet in Washington, D.C. However, by the beginning of the next episode, Trump Guy, Peter's hair has somehow reverted back to its original brown shade. Despite the hair being a major reason he was hired, no one has anything to say about it. It may seem like a small, insignificant change, but when it was pretty much the catalyst for the episode, you'd think they'd commit to it for at least one scene. Lois, pack your bags. We're joining the Trump administration. Number 18. Peter never gets his news job back after Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story. Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story has a lot of moving parts, so naturally, some things end up slipping through the cracks. Peter had a segment called What Really Grinds My Gears on the News, which propelled him to local fame. You know what really grinds my gears? This Lindsay Lohan. Eh? Lindsay Lohan with all those little outfits, jumping around there on stage, half naked with, with your little outfits. Meanwhile, Stewie attempts to reform himself after a near-death experience by being nicer to others. While committing his good deeds, Stewie crashes into the drunken clam, and Peter is subsequently fired. At the end of the three-part series, Stewie time travels directly before his accident, essentially resetting the timeline. However, Peter never got his job back on TV. If Stewie was successful in the reset, then Peter should still have his new segment. Even if this is supposed to be a film within the Family Guy universe, that doesn't mean we can't point out plot holes in that, too. Now let's get some reactions from these huge Family Guy fans. How do you like the movie, sir? Uh, it sucked. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Who do I see about getting the last two hours of my life back? Number 17. Peter and Brian don't recognize Quagmire as the one hooking up with Loretta. Hey, look at me! I'm Quagmire! I had sex with your wife! Giggity, 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 giggity. In the episode The Cleveland Loretta Quagmire, Peter and Brian rush into Cleveland's house when they hear what they think is an emergency. What they find instead is Cleveland's then-wife Loretta having sex with a man they couldn't identify. Boy, that was embarrassing, huh? Walking in on Loretta and Cleveland having sex? Uh, Peter, that wasn't, uh... You know, for a large, heavy-set black guy, Cleveland's got a cute little white ass. Brian said it was a skinny white guy, which should have been a dead giveaway it was the show's notorious sex offender Glenn Quagmire. What should have been even more of a giveaway was that the couch was right in front of Peter and Brian, so they should have been able to directly see who Loretta was having sex with. Couldn't they tell by the chin? Number 16. Peter defied the law of gravity. Hey, uh... Make yourself at home, Death. I'm, uh, I'm going out for a little while. Hey, wait, wait. You can't tell anyone I'm here. When Death is laid up in the Griffin household, he isn't able to harvest souls, so the rules of Death temporarily do not apply. In typical fashion, Peter sees this as an opportunity to be more reckless than ever. He bets Cleveland and Quagmire a thousand bucks that he can jump off a building and survive, and when he lands on the ground, he is completely unharmed. But just because the rules of Death don't apply doesn't mean bad things can't still happen. So, Peter should have been horribly disfigured from his fall, even if he wasn't able to die. Also, the fact that Peter was able to land before his loogie violates simple physics. Look, I caught flow, Joe. You don't think I can catch you? Ah! Ah! My ankle! Ah! Number 15. No one does anything about Herbert. A lot of the characters on Family Guy are not exactly what most would call or consider good people. 
But Herbert truly takes the cake. Not only does his whole character revolve around being a predator, this is even confirmed by several characters throughout the series. Know anybody with a pair of strong young hands to help me in and out of the tub? Oh, rats! And yet nobody does anything to keep him away from his targets. Stewie even lampshades this by directly stating that there's someone questionable living nearby that nobody does anything about because he's funny. We know that Peter and Lois are not exactly the most attentive parents, but you'd think they would care enough to keep their son away from him. While Herbert may be a fan favorite to some people, it's just odd that they never tried to address his criminal tendencies in an episode. No offense, Mr. Herbert, but I'm a 17-year-old girl and I don't need you here. Number 14. Stewie gets stage fright for no reason. Whoa, easy kid. These people paid good money to get in here. Oh yeah? How much are you charging them to get out? One thing about Stewie Griffin is that he practically oozes confidence. From effortlessly becoming the coolest guy in school to performing with Frank Sinatra Jr., it's hard to imagine him being shy in any setting. Well, the show decided to go back on that by having him suddenly develop stage fright during his big scene as the plug in the Terry Schiavo musical. Normally, something like this would be up his alley, especially considering he has performed live in several episodes. Seeing Stewie get so nervous and freeze up made little sense, and it seems it was only used as an excuse for Peter to start using the video camera. Sacrificing character elements for the sake of jumpstarting a story isn't uncommon for the show, but this was too blatant of a change. What's wrong with Stewie? I think he has stage fright. I think he has stage fright, Peter. That's what I just said. I said that. Number 13. Lois's sister has a baby that is never seen again. In Carol's first appearance in Emission Impossible, she gives birth to her son with the help of Peter, which inspires him and Lois to try for another baby. Eh, no baby, but it looks like Carol's blowing a bubble. Peter, that's the head! Push! Push! I am! It won't go back in! However, after this episode, Carol's son is never seen or mentioned again. There's a chance he could be with his birth father, but it's never confirmed. He isn't even brought up when Carol starts dating Adam West. Even though she doesn't appear too often, she is enough of a constant character for this to be a valid concern. Having a character give birth just to jumpstart that week's story, only for that baby to immediately fall off the face of the earth, takes Family Guy's consistency issues to a whole new level. Honey, you were fantastic. And you were so cute when you were holding it. I know, I, I didn't want to give it up. Yeah? Let's steal it. What? No, wait. I got a better idea. Number 12. Adam West's murder trial. God, I can already hear the jokes Jay Leno is going to be telling about our mayor. Oh yeah? Like what? Oh, you know, it's like you can already hear them, you know? In the real world, being on the jury for a criminal case, especially murder, comes with a long list of regulations, and for good reason. However, Family Guy is not exactly real life, and so they can get away with skirting some of these rules. But having multiple family members of the defendant on the jury has got to be breaking code of some kind. Peter, Brian, and Carter would all be too biased to be on the jury, seeing as they're related to West through Carol. Having just Peter or even him and Brian would be one thing, but including Lois's dad Carter was pushing it. This was most likely due to the show not having enough recurring or familiar characters to fill a jury if they excluded him. In closing, although it seems pretty clear that my client committed this murder, I would consider it a personal favor to me if you found him not guilty. Number 11. Lois's parents should be much older. Ah, oh, your father was so handsome back then. I remember the day we met. In the episode Welcome Back, Carter, Lois's mom, Barbara Pewterschmidt, tells the story of how she met her husband, Carter. Though no specific time is set for when the flashback took place, it looks like the two met around the late 1930s. One major clue for this date was Carter introducing Babs to the song Jeepers Creepers, which came out in 1938. Since the episode took place in 2010, that would make Lois's parents around 90 years old, which would have made them both 50 years old when Lois was born. Oh, Carter, you're alive! I've missed you so! Number 10. Brian becomes a psychic? After Brian accidentally hits a dog in Dog Gone, he tries to convince the town that dogs' lives are just as important as human lives. Unfortunately, no one agrees, not even his family. Brian, it's a dog! That's not a crime! What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's not like you killed a person or, or even ran over somebody's mailbox. Stewie decides to take things into his own hands by committing arson and tricking his parents into thinking Brian was the victim. Brian sees everyone hugging and crying over his supposed death, and thanks Stewie for helping, although he briefly confronts him about burning down the store. 
This all seems fine, until you realize that Brian was upstairs while the firefighter was explaining the situation, meaning he didn't actually hear about the fire. It's a blink and you'll miss it plot hole, but there's no logical explanation for how Brian would have known what Stewie did for him. Wait a second, just to prove a point to me, you burned down a liquor store and murdered a dog? Well, a stray. Thank you. Number 9. The Griffins Not Recognizing the Simpsons In a legendary cartoon crossover called The Simpsons Guy, the Griffins traveled to Springfield and ended up meeting and staying with the Simpsons. A poo? A dozen donuts for our albino visitors. Wow, for real? This would have been an excellent setup for the characters' meeting if the characters hadn't already met the Griffins several times. Not only is The Simpsons referenced and parodied throughout the series, there have been moments where Homer has interacted with characters on Family Guy, such as when he served on the gang's trial in Cool Hand Peter. You would think that at least one of the Griffins would have recognized them, particularly Peter. However, when they meet, they act as though they've never heard of the family or the show. It put a decent-sized plot hole into what could have been a stellar collaboration. Oh, thank you so much for putting us up until we find our car. And thank you for not being a band of hippie murderers. Number 8. Bonnie is pregnant for years. Okay, first of all, Bonnie, you've been pregnant for like six years, all right? Either have the baby or don't. In animated shows, it's common for characters to stay the same age for years at a time, or age at a very slow rate. Normally, it's easy to suspend disbelief in those kinds of situations, but when one of the principal characters is pregnant for years, that can start to become a tad noticeable. Bonnie ended up being pregnant for around a decade before Susie was finally born, and her insanely long pregnancy is mostly mentioned as a throwaway joke. Susie isn't the only Swanson child to be put on the back burner. Bonnie and Joe's oldest son Kevin was gone for years before being brought back in a climactic way only for him to be relegated to a character that's mostly off-screen or with rare appearances. Hey, Joe, what's your favorite preparation of a tomato? Is it sun-dyed tomato? Number 7. Lois's Accent Stewie's taking a nap, and Peter and the kids are out. A product of working-class upbringing, Peter has a thick New England accent. However, Lois has an even thicker accent, despite having grown up in a wealthy household. No one from her family shares her accent, her mother has a stuffy upper-class accent, while her father, brother, and sister don't have any discernible accents whatsoever. A pleasure, Peter. My daughter is quite taken with you. Lois wouldn't have picked it up from any of her social circles, so it makes no sense that Lois has the accent she does. Where could she have picked up a blue-collar New England accent? Well, the safety of our children is a very important part of my plan for Quahog. Number 6. Stewie's parents can't understand him, even though most adults can. Aren't you a little young to be traveling alone? Aren't you a little old to be wearing braces? Family Guy has been all over the place as to who can understand Stewie when he talks. Yeah, uh, I, I don't get it. So, like, can the family understand the baby, or or, or what, what's the deal with that? The show has been upfront in pointing out how inconsistent the rules are from time to time, with Brian and Stewie debating whether Loretta is the kind of character who could understand him in Love Blackshally. Really? Isn't she one of those people outside the family who can understand me? In earlier seasons, Chris could not understand Stewie, though now they regularly interact. However, this gets most confusing with Peter and Lois, who don't understand what Stewie is saying most of the time, even though Lois in particular is way smarter than Chris. Mom! 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 Mommy! Mommy! Mama! 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 What? Hi. <laughs> Number 5. Peter isn't Meg's biological father, but she supposedly looks like him. And Meg's real father's name is Stan Thompson. To show how good a family man Brian is and screwed the pooch, Peter had Brian answer questions about things only he knew about the Griffin family. This included the fact that Meg's biological father wasn't Peter, but rather a man named Stan Thompson. In Not All Dogs Go to Heaven, Brian tells Meg that life isn't fair because she looks like Peter, thus implying that Peter is Meg's biological father. Really? Would he give you a smoking hot mom like Lois and then have you grow up looking like Peter? While it's possible that Brian was lying to psychologically abuse Meg, the simpler explanation is whoever wrote this scene screwed up. But from now on, Meg, you and me are secret best friends. Number 4. Stewie contracted herpes from Brian's blood, which is impossible. Hey, what you watching? The Outlaw Josie Wales. It's a western. After watching a scene in The Outlaw Josie Wales where Clint Eastwood cuts his palm as part of a blood oath ritual, Stewie wants to replicate the ritual with Brian. However, the next day after Stewie and Brian cut their palms and share their blood, Stewie wakes up with a herpes outbreak. It's eventually revealed that Brian tricked Stewie into taking the blood oath as a way to spread herpes to the infant through his blood. 
The problem here is that herpes is not a disease that can be transmitted through blood. So Brian's plan isn't scientifically possible. Okay, fine, I admit it, I gave you herpes. Number three, Brian has a 13 year old son, even though he's only seven. Brian, this is Dylan, he's your son. In the former life of Brian, Brian reunites with an old flame who tells him that she's been raising a 13 year old son that he fathered named Dylan. The thing is, Brian's only seven years old, so fathering a 13 year old would be mathematically impossible. So Dylan, um, shouldn't you be in school? I don't know. When Stewie asks how that's possible, Brian explains that when you go by dog years, that would make Brian much older. Except that's not how dog years work. Brian would still be seven by human years, which would make Dylan older than he is. And don't even get us started on how a dog can father a human child. Hey, knock knock. Who's there? You're there. Number two, Quagmire is 61, yet could not drink alcohol under the new drinking age law. And if we can't trust a 42 year old man to drink responsibly, then I have no choice but to take action. When Quahog Mayor Adam West raised the town's drinking age to 50, Peter and his friends found themselves unable to purchase alcohol. The only way they were able to drink was by hanging around Bryant, who was over the legal age because he was 56 in dog years. However, it was revealed in the episode Foxy Lady that Quagmire was 61 years old and that he was able to retain a youthful appearance by ingesting carrots in various ways. Sometimes I grind them up into juice or just eat them raw. Quagmire would have been old enough to drink under the new law, so he could have bought himself and his friends all the booze they wanted. Sorry, in this town you can only buy alcohol if you're dressed head to toe in jeans. Number one, Brian met Jesus but is still an atheist. How do we know you're really Jesus? Can you perform miracles? When Peter brought Jesus over for dinner at the Griffin household in I Dream of Jesus, Brian asked for proof that the man really was Jesus. To honor the request, Jesus performed some miracles, producing ice cream sundaes and enlarging Lois's breasts. The latter miracle was so impressive, it caused Brian's jaw to drop to the table. In the episode Not All Dogs Go to Heaven, Brian said that he's an atheist, not having any good reason to believe in God. Except you do, Brian. You had dinner with Jesus and he performed miracles in front of you that proved he was the real deal. That's not something you'd expect someone to forget. You want an explanation? God is pissed. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.